The Cisco IS, or Internet Network Operating System, is the operating system that runs on high-end Cisco routers and switches and provides the command and syntax structure for the Cisco CLI or command line interface. On newer model routers, the IS also provides the SDM, or Security Device Manager, a web interface that allows configuration of Cisco equipment through a client's web browser. This feature is generally only available in modern versions of the IS, such as the 2800 series routers and above. 1. Let's take a look at logging in via a terminal emulator and navigating between user mode and privilege mode. Privilege mode is like administrative access in Windows or root access in Linux. We're going to be connecting to a uh, Cisco 2800 series router today. And for the physical connection, uh, unless you have an older computer or laptop, you probably don't have anything that has a 9-pin RX-232 serial port. No problem. You can go on Amazon.com or Tiger Direct, PriceWatch, and for about 10 maybe nine ten dollars get yourself a usb to rs232 nine pin serial port adapter you'll also want to order a, a cisco db9 adapter and then if you don't get the kind that has the rollover cable connection built in then you can simply make your own rollover cable which is just an R rj45 uh you know type a cable on one side and you simply flip everywhere uh, on the other side and we discussed that previously and we were talking about different kinds of cables and, and pin ups so when you make the physical connection, you want to use your favorite terminal emulator. It could be HyperTerminal or Putty or you know whatever your favorite terminal emulator software is. And when you connect to the console port on the router with your you know your cables and adapters, this is what you'll see. And you want to hit return to get started. And this puts us in you know what's called user mode at first. In the user mode, we can view statistics and things on the router, but we can't really make any global modifications or configure anything. So if I were to do show int. I can look at the interface there and I can see kind of what's going on on the router. But to actually make changes, I need to go into privileged mode. And privileged mode is if I use the command or keyword enable. And notice as the command prompt changes, you know, before it was a greater than symbol, now it's a pound symbol. And you want to learn to recognize these subtle, you know, symbols here when the command prompt changes. That'll kind of let you know where you are in the Cisco IS and what you can do at what level. So now that I'm in privilege mode, if I wanted to get out, I could basically use one of three commands, disable, log out, or exit. And so if I wanted to go back to you know the default where I just connected, I could exit out. Okay, and then let me enable, I'll go back to privilege mode. And then another method I might choose is disable. And that'll still leave me logged in in user mode, um, but I'll no longer be in privilege mode. And then also, if I wanted to, um, you know, I could use log out, and again, that would put me right back where I started. So just, you know, kind of learn to recognize the, the prompt symbols there, and let's look at several, you know, different levels of access, user mode and privilege mode to start. Two, let's take a look at a diagram of the back of a 2800 series ISR router. Let's take a quick look at the back of our router, and in this case, we have several serial connections slot 1 and slot 0, and there's two fast Ethernet connections, uh, 00 and 01 respectively. And these are you know, physically uh, different interfaces where we could route between different networks or subnets. But in addition to that, you can do you know, potentially hundreds or thousands of uh, sub-interfaces on these physical interfaces here. If I were using VLANs and I had racks of switches and things going into the router. But when we configure these, and you know, when you see uh, 0 forward slash 0 or 0 forward slash 1 just realize that we're going back and forth between these two physical RJ45 uh, fast Ethernet ports here and you know this is a kind of a simple router, router interface but you could have routers with you know six or even eight of these installed depending on how many you know bells and whistles and extra features and things you want to add to your Cisco routers but this is the, you know we'll be configuring back and forth between these two ports here so kind of hold that image in the back of your mind here 3. Let's take a look at recognizing the IS command prompt structure and navigating between privilege mode, global configuration mode, interface configuration mode, line configuration mode, and router configuration mode. We're back in our terminal emulator and now we're going to user mode and then privilege mode. And we want to make some global configuration changes. And just notice how the, once again, how the command prompt changes. So when I'm in user mode, see how it's just a greater than symbol. And when I'm in privilege mode, notice how it's a pound symbol. 
And as we do different things, let's watch how the prompt will change. And um, these changes are subtle, but they allow us to know where we are in the iOS command line interface and where we need to go to accomplish whatever it is that we want to accomplish. So if we learn to read these subtle changes and prompt symbols, um, that's how we'll kind of recognize where we are in the iOS. And the first thing we want to look at is the config command. And typically you'll type config t to configure terminal. And notice how the prompt changes from a pound symbol in privilege mode to terminal configuration mode. And there's a config. And I'm going to exit. Another thing that I can do with just about any command in the IS is if I type the command in space, I can follow it with a question mark. And when I do, that'll list the possible options there. So there's confirm, memory, network, overwrite network, replace, terminal. Another thing that I could also do if I simply type config and enter, notice it tells me terminal, memory, or network. And by default, I could choose terminal. And again, the prompt changes to config, okay? Um, now the next thing I want to look at are interfaces. And I could type out the whole word interface, or I could just use the short word int. But again, if I use my question mark, this will give me all the possible interfaces. Remember those first two physical interfaces we were looking at, fast ethernet 00 and fast ethernet 01? There they are. In, in addition, there are many other interfaces that we could configure on a router. Now, you don't have to type out the whole word interface. You can just type out um, int. And I kind of like to use those short abbreviated uh, versions of the commands. Um, you know, why, why type more than you have to? But of course, that's your personal preference. But once again, notice how this command prompt will change when I you know, go to a different section of the IS. So this time, I'm in terminal configuration mode and I want to select a particular interface and watch how it would change. So to do that, I would just say fast, fast ethernet. And in this case, I want to do, let me just select a zero, zero. Okay. And notice how the command prompt went from config and terminal configuration to now I'm configuring the interface. So it's config dash if. And again, I could just exit, brings me back, and then I could say, and again, I could just do F00 if I don't want to type out the whole thing. Okay, so we've looked at terminal configuration, interface configuration. Now, in addition, let me exit back down to terminal configuration. In addition to those two physical fast ethernet interfaces, there are numerous sub-interfaces, um, you, know, you know, basically in the billions that I could configure on each one of those. And in order to select one, int and f0, 0, zero and then if I did dot, and I'm going to do a question mark here. And notice, what is this? Let me count it. What is that? 4,294,967,295. Quite a few there, but... Basically, I'm not limited to those two physical interfaces. If I wanted, I could, there's lots of subnetting and different networks I could do through a subinterface command. So again, watch the command prompt change. This time, instead of an interface, I'm going to do a subinterface. And I'll just do point 0.1. And notice, whereas I selected fast Ethernet 00, a physical port up here, and the prompt changed from config to config-if, down here, when I selected a subinterface, it changed from config and terminal configuration to config dash subf for a subinterface. Okay, and let me go ahead and exit out of this and go back to terminal configuration mode. And again, I'll go back to just you know normal standard privilege mode there. And let's see what else can we take a look at as far as the command line interface prompt changing for us. Okay, um, let me go back to configuration mode, config t, and notice again how the prompt changes. So it's config. One of the other things that I can config, um, you know, are different line settings. And to get there, I'm just going to type line. I'm going to hit a question mark to show you what they are. And notice that I have line number zero through one thousand five hundred and two auxiliary console. Uh, the terminal controller TTY VTY for a virtual terminal. Lots of different things that I could configure. But again, just to show you an example of the prompt change, I'm going to select the console port, console 0. And if I do that, notice that, once again, the prompt changes from config to config-line. So if we learn to recognize these subtle prompts, again, we'll always know where we are in the IS, and we'll know where we need to go. Last but not least, let me do a router command. 
and you can add several different types of dynamic routing protocols on a Cisco router. There's of course the standard you know, broadcast based routing information protocol or RIP. There's uh, you know, open source path first or OSPF. There's IGRP and EIGRP, the pr proprietary Cisco dynamic routing protocols. But whichever one of those you want to configure, if I do router and a question mark, look at my options there. And then let's say we're going to configure RIP. Watch how the prompt will change goes from config to config-router, okay? So once again, just looking at those kind of subtle prompt changes, and I can type exit and exit and exit, and yet another way, there are so many different ways to, to navigate the IS, but yet another way, if I hold down control and Z, it will take me back to privilege mode. And then I can do hold down control Z, and I can type exit, and once again, I'm back where I started. Four. Let's log into our 2800 series ISR router and view the running configuration with the command show run, which is in memory, and the startup configuration with the command show start, which is in NVRAM or non-volatile memory. Once again, we're logging into a 2800 series router, and let's look at some basic commands from privilege mode. And these are just commands to get information about our router, and we'll use these when we're trying to diagnose routing issues and, you know, basically resolve problems on a network. One of the first commands you might use is the show running configuration. And you can type it out the long way, which is show running dash config, or you can simply type sh run, which is my preference. This kind of gives you the current configuration of the router. Notice that, you know, here's the host name. In this case, it's just called router. I'm not using any encryption in the password. I'm trying to highlight this with my mouse, but my terminal emulation program is not that. Um, any interfaces that I had configured, in this case I haven't configured any yet on this router. No sub-interfaces, you know, serial, no clock rate, anything like that. But very, you know, useful information. Once I do configure these things, when I start trying to troubleshoot my network and, you know, configure it and diagnose routing issues and things like that. So there's the show run command. There's also the show start command, which will, will basically show my startup configuration. And again, the long version of that command is show startup dash config. But why type that when you can simply type sh space start? And this will give me some basic information in my startup file. This is sort of the, you know, in the boot process when my router boots up or powers up what goes on with that startup file. Five, let's erase the startup configuration file to reset the router. Um, and in addition to that, you know, you can erase the startup configuration file. There are some situations where you might want to do that if you, you know, you might make some errors and things in configuration. You want to kind of go back to a default state. But if that were the case, I could use the command erase startup config. And notice it would ask me, you know, am I sure that I want to do this? Um, and I'll have to confirm it. I'll press enter. And notice it initialized the geometry of non-volatile RAM or NVRAM. And then, of course, the only thing is if I were to, since there's no longer a startup file until the next time I, you know, boot, it will tell me that, hey, you know, it's not there. Can't do that. But, you know, show run and show start are probably two of the most useful information gathering commands in the Cisco IS uh, from privilege mode. Six, let's take a look at enabling and configuring passwords in the Cisco IS. One of the first things we want to do is implement some kind of security, and that means passwords. We don't want just anybody logging into our routers um, over, you know, VTY terminal and Telnet or console or auxiliary and making changes because potentially that could, you know, bring down an entire network. So to implement some kind of security, I'm going to go into you know, terminal configuration mode once again. And from this mode, I can use the command enable. And the old way of doing it was password. And I can say enable password blueberry. And I can also enable the secret, which is sort of the new password, or the new way of doing a password. And really, you don't want to use this command unless you're on old equipment. Just use secret because it doesn't matter anyway. When I log in now, I'm going to have to type banana, not blueberry. Because when I use the secret command to set a password, it, it overrides the password command. And just to demonstrate, I'm going to exit. And exit, I'll go back and we'll log in and we'll try to go to privilege mode now. And when I do, it's going to query me for a password. And if I type blueberry, 
it's not going to let me in, even though that's my password, because secret overrides it. And since I type banana, if I type that in the secret, now I actually get back into privileged mode. Okay, so I set a password there, and again, remember we had our commands for showing configuration. Um, let's show the running configuration. And if I go through here, um, in this case, looking at some of the different options, here's my secret. And notice that my secret password is, you know, it's automatically encrypted for me, and that's the banana password. And then my old password, blueberry, is there as well. Seven. Let's look at saving your changes to NVRAM. Copying the running configuration to the startup configuration. Now that hasn't changed the startup configuration. If I were to look at that, notice that in this case, you know, nothing's been set. And if I wanted to change that, I can use the command um, copy and then run to start. I want to copy my running configuration to my startup configuration. And of course, the long version of that would be copy run. Uh, you know, config dash config and to start dash config, but again, I like to use the short commands. And if I did that, now if I show my startup configuration, notice that those passwords you know, are there. There's my banana that's encrypted and there's my blueberry password that was set with the original command. Um, now, as long as the router is powered up, any changes you make to the running configuration will, you know, they'll stay, they'll remain, but if you reboot that router or that router powers down, all those changes will be lost unless you copy them into the startup configuration. So maybe a useful command. Just make sure that those changes work and that they're changes you want to keep before you copy the running configuration uh, to the startup configuration. Eight. Now let's configure some line passwords for Telnet, console, and auxiliary ports. We've configured some global passwords now, using password and using a secret. Remember, secret overrides password. So I'm in user mode, and now if I want to get to privilege mode, I have to type in my secret. Remember, it was just banana. And now I want to go into terminal configuration mode, and what I'm interested in right now are these. So I'll hit line and a question mark, and in this case, specifically, I want to configure VTY, which is the virtual terminal where, where I tell that. And then I want to configure the console where I would actually you know, use a DB9 adapter and connect via console and auxiliary as well. If I had a modem or, you know, I could also use an adapter and connect there using a the laptop if I wanted to. But, um, so let's, let's look at configuring the first one. And we'll do VTY, the virtual terminal for Telnet. And basically we're always going to start at zero and then I'm going to hit a question mark to show you the available options. Dependent on the model, you know, router that you have, 2500, 2600, 2800, and depending on the options installed, the last line number is going to vary. You know, could be four, could be 100 something. In this case, it's 1180. But I want to select them all. So 1180, and that'll allow me to select the Telnet interface. And I have not yet configured a password for Telnet. And so by default, um, Telnet login is disabled. And that's a good thing, right? I mean, you don't want somebody being able to tell that into your router until you set a password on it. Otherwise, they could do a lot of damage on the network. So if I were to do that, let, let me just show you. If I tried to log in, it won't let me. Login disabled until password is set. And to set a password, we'll just use the command password. And in this case, I'll just use strawberry, okay? And so now I have a password set of strawberry, and I can log in. I have that option now. I'm going to exit and just show you my running configuration. So I, I drop back down to privilege mode, exited out of line configuration mode, and out of terminal configuration mode. And if I were to show the running configuration now, notice here are my global passwords. There's the secret that's encrypted. There's the old password, which is blueberry, and this, this is banana here. And then if I come down here, Notice that there's strawberry, okay? So in this case, VTY04 strawberry, VTY, uh, you know, in this case, uh, strawberry password set for Telnet. So if I log in via Telnet and connect over VTY, that would be the, the password I need to type in to complete the login authentication process. So I'm gonna go back to terminal configuration mode, and this time we're gonna select another option, and it's gonna be console. And if again, I do line and a question mark, that gives me all of the possibilities there. And I could fully type out console, I could type out cons, or I could just type out con, either way. 
and there's only one so all I have to do is type 0 and that will select in this case the console port and the same thing here if I try to log in notice that it's disabled until a password is set so password and I'll call this one Kiwi and I'm going to exit and I'm also going to select another line, in this case aux, or auxiliary, zero. And same thing, password. And let's see, I guess fruit is the theme today. We're making fruit salad. So, hmm, these are the hard questions in life. What What's the next thing we're going to pick here? Um, mango, there we go. Okay. And again, that enables login privileges. So I'm going to drop out of the configuration terminal and go back down to privilege mode and again just show my running configuration. And there are my two global passwords, banana and blueberry. Let me drop down here and notice I have kiwi, mango and strawberry respectively for all of these guys. Alright, so all of those passwords have been set and then again if I wanted to save it I just copy run start. Nine. Let's take a look at encrypting passwords with the command service password encryption. Now, one of the things I might want to do is encrypt my passwords. You can see that they're all in plain text right now. And one of the useful features, let me go back to terminal configuration mode, is service password encryption. And that will basically use a one-way hash for all of my passwords. So if I type in the command service, password, encryption, then if I were to drop back down, um, Oops, went back to Linux mode there front. Okay. But let me drop back down to uh, privileged mode here. And at the prompt, if I were to show my running configuration and look at my passwords, notice now everything's encrypted. My global password that was, you know, just Blueberry, that the password is, of course, Banana was already encrypted, the secret. But if I come down here, notice that Strawberry and Kiwi and Mango and all of those passwords are encrypted as well. Okay. And that's a neat uh, feature. Another important note is on some routers, there's kind of a bug um, in the sense that if I just use, if I just type in service password encryption and I don't drop down to privilege mode and show the running configuration, it, it doesn't encrypt the passwords. If I were to just copy the running configuration to start up and, and not actually verify or test that they're encrypted, it will not encrypt them. So you might want to make a little note in the back of your head somewhere that you know if I use this service, this feature, service password encryption, that I want to go into privilege mode and just do you know show running configuration to actually encrypt the passwords. But when I do that, if I were to go back to global configuration mode, and you know in this case I'll you know config t, I can turn the service off. And why not? You know once they're encrypted, I don't need to run the service any longer. Might as well turn it off, right? Um, And notice that that does not change them back to plain text. It's a one-way hash, and they're still encrypted. If I wanted plain text passwords, uh, I'd have to just simply re-enter them as plain text. So once you've run that service one time, and you've you know changed your passwords and encrypted them, you can turn it off and maybe save yourself some resources. 10. We're going to take a look at specifying no password with the command no login. Some other commands that bear mentioning that have to do with passwords. Um, again, let me go to global configuration mode. Um, all right, so config t and let me select. Um, first thing we'll do here is aux zero for auxiliary. Okay, and let's say that you know I specified a password, but let's say that I want to allow people to log in without a password. Um, in this case, I could simply use the command no login and let me exit here and I'll go to console zero and again I'll exit and let me go to VTY and let me see what's our last one okay our last one is 1180 our last line on this one and that basically lets people log in without having to enter the password. Kiwi, mango, strawberry, whatever it was we used there. But not necessarily a good idea, but, you know, that's available there as an option if, if you choose to do that. 11. Let's take a look at using the commands login synchronous and exec timeout. 
two more useful commands um, that I can utilize. Let me go. I'm at privilege mode. Let me get again go to global configuration or terminal configuration mode, and I'm going to select in this in this instance console zero. So line console zero, um, and then on the console I can set logging uh, logging synchronous. And by default, it's asynchronous, which means I could be typing input, and different, you know, things might be displaying while I'm trying to type a command, and you know, feedback coming from router commands and other other commands and things that might be running on the router or on the layer three switch. And were that the case, it might be kind of confusing. You know, I'm trying to type a command in, and the screen keeps changing in the terminal. So what this does is it'll force it to wait until I'm done with the input and I hit enter before you know the next uh, bit of information is displayed as output in the terminal. So that's kind of a neat command. And another one is exec timeout. And by default it's zero zero. And that just means that there is no timeout. So I can be logged in on the console and if I don't do anything it just stays there until somebody comes in and exits. But that might not be the wisest choice. So I might say I want to set it for 60 seconds. I could do exec dash timeout zero sixty and I would set it for 60 seconds. And this way if I don't type anything and the cursor doesn't move, after 60, uh, after, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> after 60 seconds it will log me out. 12. Let's set up a banner with the banner command. Use banner, MOTD, and a delimiter character. Another command that you might find useful is the banner command. And to implement that, I'm again going to go to global configuration mode with config t. Notice how my prompt changes. And the command is simply banner, MOTD for message of the day, just like in Linux. You know, Linux has a banner that you can set when you log in and also when you boot, called MOTD message of the day. Uh, and even Microsoft Active Directory has a directory message, you know, login message that you can set with group policy. Um, and even if you're doing peer to peer in Microsoft, you can do it with registry settings and the local security policy. There's a logon message you can set, or you can create a VB script and have it, you know, that script load and execute as soon as they log in but you know for whatever reason you may decide to put a banner message on your router this is the way you would do it and then what you want to follow this with is a delimiter character a lot of people use like the at symbol or you know the uh, asterisk or something like that it just needs to be something that you won't use in your actual message I like to use the pipe symbol which is a straight up line over the backward slash and we'll just say we're tiny we're toony, we're all a little loony. And then this cartoony, we're invading your TV. No, but so I'd hit the pipe symbol as the delimiter and then hit her. So there's my banner message. We're tiny, we're toony, we're all a little loony. And then I'm just going to exit, or I could control Z. And then now when I log in, I'll actually get my MOTD banner message now. So the message of the day is, we're tiny, we're toony, we're all a little loony.